Look, I know what you're thinking. I know that this is a very niche character pick from a very niche game. But have you actually thought about how a beat-em-up character could work in Smash? And a modern classic, no less. Yeah, this isn't an old game. Castle Crashers came out in the summer of 2008. I was five when this game came out. What the hell? This is an indie gem that I see no one talking about nowadays, and with it recently being re-released on the Nintendo Switch, I'd say that it could potentially have a huge second wind if this character gets in Smash. Not only for the indie gaming community, but for the beat-em-up community, the online creation community, and the Smash community as a whole. And so I ask, what would happen if the Castle Crashers came to Smash? Let's find out. Watch Crackalack, Toxic Crew, my name is Toxicquid, and I've already told you the mission statement of this video. We are going to be making a complete DLC fighter concept, complete with a moveset, spirit battles, classic mode, alternate costumes, the whole shebang. So why delay things and instead just get started? We're just talking about the castle crashes, yo. Whoa, 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 whoa. Actually, before we get into things, we first need to clear up something very important before any attacks can be thrown out. And the best way to explain this is to actually go over the alternate costumes right now. It'll make a little bit more sense later. For this demonstration, I will be using the Green Knight as my proxy for this episode and as the default costume. This is partially because he is one of the four main knights of the game, but also is the first one that shows up on the character select screen by default. He uses a thin sword. There's also the red knight with the mace, blue knight with the sheathed sword, the orange knight with the broad axe, gray knight with the skinny sword, a cult minion palette with the glow stick, pink knight with the lollipop, and a D-antler blacksmith with the hammer. The tricky part about implementing the castle crashers into Smash is that every single one of these characters has different strengths and weaknesses despite looking pretty much the exact same aside from a color swap and weapon. And so, for the sake of brevity, I'm going to be making all these costumes play the exact same as the Green Knight to some extent, and all the weapon differences will be purely cosmetic. Same with magic. This means that the Green Knight's poison will have the same exact effect as the Red Knight's lightning, Orange Knight's fire, and everything in between. The exact effects are up to interpretation, but I think for the sake of simplicity, there will be no side effects inflicted when performing magic attacks, which will come in the special attacks section. Alright, with that all out of the way, let's go start things up with the standard attacks. After exiting from a tiny castle, the Castle Crashers crash into Smash. In Castle Crashers, there are two modes of attack being light and heavy, and I'm gonna be honest, I do NOT want another Shoto in Smash, but with a sword this time. And so, I have separated out each input on a case-by-case -case basis, as you'll come to learn. A great example of this would be the jab combo with the light combo, which is a two-part jab that swipes horizontally left, and then horizontally right. You can also repeat the input and technically do an infinite jab, but you'll just have to time it. The dash attack is lunge, where they can wind back and thrust the sword forward similar to in-game with the light input. The up tilt is an uppercut, the down tilt is a shield bump that can block minor projectiles, and the forward tilt is the heavy attack, where he thrusts the sword forward, more so like a punch, but with a sword in hand. For the getup attack, they just swing the sword parallel to the floor, and the ledge getup is a heavy dash attack, stabbing the sword forward and then rolling. And so, that's all the standard attacks, so now let's continue onwards to the smash attacks. The side smash is the heavy finisher, where the crasher winds back, then thrusts the sword forward like a forward tilt, but then spins the weapon in a circle. The up smash is a spinning uppercut, the finisher from the combo of the same name, where they uppercut the sword and then flip backwards. And the down smash is stomp, jump up, slam down, causes shockwave damage, you get the idea. And with that, I think we should mix things up even more and mosey on over to the special attacks. I know, this is the first video back and we're already breaking all sorts of conventions, huh? As previously mentioned, all the elemental magic will stay the same in properties. This does not apply towards cosmetics though, meaning that the orange knight will still use fire, blue knight ice, pink knight rainbows, etc, etc. And this does come through in most of the specials, starting with the neutral special, the Elemental Burst. 
This is a chargeable explosion attack. It is quick to charge, but comes at the cost of damage output and distance. It has a modest burst distance, but definitely isn't a projectile by any means. The side special, however, is definitely a projectile with the elemental beam. The Cratchers concentrate a beam of elemental magic and then shoots it out like a bullet. It's quick and stuns enemies. And if it's used in midair, it will be shot from a 45 degree angle downwards much like Ness's PK fire. The up special is the magic jump. It's a quick fire boost into the air with elemental magic. Simple as that. What isn't simple is the down special, also known as the Castle Crashers gimmick. See, the Castle Crashers don't just have hand weapons and shields to attack, they also have assortments of items ranging from bows and bombs to horns, shovels, boomerangs, and the like. We will not be using that, however. Instead, we will call in the help of the Animal Orbs. These are also known as pets in the Castle Crasher community, and for the purposes of Smash, will act as buffs and debuffs for the Crasher. One is summoned with the press of a button and is set on a timer. Pressing the button again before the timer runs out can swap the pets, resetting the timer. There are five animal orbs that you can cycle through, each giving a different and unique effect. There's the burly bear that grants a buff in physical damage but a nerf in defense. The spiny inversely buffs defense but nerfs knockback power to your attacks. Meowbert buffs speed but nerfs jump, Snailbert lowers knockback to you but decreases speed, and the behemoth buffs magic damage but nerfs physical damage. Also, as you can see, they show up in the UI as well when you summon them. And with that, that's all for the special attacks, now let's couple that in with the aerials to see what we can come up with. The aerials are kind of tricky, but also simplistic to explain. Here, let me try my best. The neutral special is the cyclone where they spin like a top, but in the air. The forward aerial is the consecutive slash, which is just a jab combo, but also in the air. And the back air is the elemental flash where they twist backwards, reaches out, and releases a plume of elemental magic. The cloudward slash is the up air and is much like an uppercut, but in the air as well. And the down air is something that, honestly, I can't really describe. I'm really just calling it the strong swipe and looks like this. It is actually in the game, but I'm still unsure what it's supposed to be. It's super stiff looking, but is hella powerful, spiking if hit in the sweet spot. As someone who doesn't regularly play beat-em-ups, I was surprised at the somewhat robust throw game that these characters boast. The grab uses both hands, the pummel uses that big ol' helmet that bashed her skulls in, and the forward and back throws are the exact same. They wind up and chuck them in the appropriate direction. The up throw is the arc throw and is exactly what it sounds like, and the down throw is the slam down where they slam the opponent down on the floor, bouncing them upwards. <laughs> That's probably the most basic you can get throws wise, but hey, if it's in the source material to use, then why not just use it, eh? Alrighty, that's all the moves in the moveset, but I feel like we're forgetting a big addition, eh? Alright, it's just a final smash. The final smash takes the castle crasher and makes him eat a sandwich. <laughs> that's crazy. But after that, they transform into the beefy crashers and winds up a ginormous punch and absolutely decimates anyone in their path if they get hit. Julio, that's that for the moveset now in its entirety, but we still have a bunch more to go. For starters, the taunts. The up taunt has the castle crasher jam out, the side taunt strikes a pose like he's getting ready to fight, and the down taunt turns towards the camera and gives a very forceful thumbs up. Oh, here's Kirby as well. After inhaling the Crasher, he'll gain access to the Elemental Burst. Kirby will only have the Green Knight's effects for the sake of simplicity, but the effects are pretty much the same. And as we've discussed the alternate costumes already, let's now move on to their quirks, which honestly there aren't that many of. Firstly, here's their distribution of stats, gumbo if you please. They are moderately fast, really good in the air, and just kinda do their own thing once you allow them to do so. As you can see, they also have a shield, and they can do what shields do best, block minor projectiles when you aren't doing anything. Next up is the stage, and I elected to go with the King's Arena. This is a walk-off stage modeled after the arena of the same name. There are no gimmick platforms, but horses will drop by sometimes and you can ride on top of them if you time your jump just right. And with a stage comes stage music, and Castle Crashers has a plethora of amazing music to choose from. For the remixes, there's Dark Sky and Flutie. For the rest of the music, there's Race Around the World, Revenge of the Cyclops, Archetype, Till Death Do You Part, The Show, and Final Confrontation. 
And with that, now let's get on to the classic mode and finish up with the spirits. The Castle Crashers classic mode is called a Noble Conquest, and like all classic modes, has 8 rounds with one of them being a bonus round. Round 1 is against a horde of 5 Simons on Castle Siege with Dark Skies playing and references the Castle Keep fight with the Barbarians. Round 2 is a horde of 3 Sheiks on Green Greens with Race Around the World playing, referencing the Thieves in the Thieves' Forest. Round 3 doesn't really change anything having you fight another horde of 5 Samuses on the Spirit Train with Death Do You Part playing in reference to the Coneheads on the Parade level. Round 4 is against a horde of 6 Bowser Juniors on Midgar with Archetype playing in the background to reference the entirety of the Industrial Castle level. Round 5 is a horde of 8 shiny Greninjas on the pirate ship with Flutie playing in the background to reference the ninjas on the pirate ship. That sounds like such an odd sentence to say if it weren't real. You gotta trust me on this. It's an actual thing. Round 6 this time around is actually the bonus stage. Neat. Round 7 is a fight with the Blacksmith Crasher and a Grey Lucas on Final Destination with Final Confrontation playing, all to reference that final set of levels with the Necromancer and the Evil Wizard. And if round 7 is the final battle of the game, what does that make round 8? It makes a fight with another Castle Crasher on the King's Arena with the show playing, all to reference the fights with the other Castle Crashers to see who kisses the princess after rescuing them. And that's the classic mode, let's now wrap things up with the spirit battles, yo! I will say that the Castle Crasher's spirit board is the smallest of this batch of characters, clocking in at 8. Starting with the novice spirits, there's the barbarian boss as a primary defense spirit and is a fight against an orange young link on the king's arena where the enemy is giant, back shields spawn more often, and the enemy doesn't like to jump. You are rewarded with battering items up. The conehead groom is up next as a support attack spirit and is a great crasher on castle siege where the killer eyes spawn more often, movement speed is increased, and rewards with a beam sword on startup. Moving on to the advanced spirits, there's the Catfish as a primary attack spirit, who is a blue incinerer on jungle japes, where there's heavy wind, deals damage by dashing into you, and only Oshawats appear out of Boca Balls. This reward with water attack up. Cyclops is next as a primary neutral spirit and is a fight against a cloud and then a great DDD on Dracula's castle, where the enemies are giant, is a stamina battle, and rewards with nothing. It is enhanceable to become the undead Cyclops though. Capping off the advanced spirits is the Frost King as a primary defense spirit and is a blue Zelda and a tiny blue blue ice climbers on Spear Pillar. They taunt often, tends to use specials more often, the floor is slippery, and magic power is increased. You are rewarded with a Freezy on startup. Coming up next is the Ace Spirit starting with the Necromancer as a support defense spirit and is a blacksmith alt crasher on Omega Arena Ferrex who starts with a rocket belt, tends to use aerials and special attacks more often, and gets random final smash. You are rewarded with a killing edge on startup. And the final Ace Spirit is the primary grab spirit that is the King. This is a fight against a Corn with the Horde of Grey Crashers on Windy Hill Zone. You have to defeat the main fighter to win, the enemies are easily launched, and tend to jump around a lot, as well as using Side Smash more often. You are rewarded with First Strike Advantage. And to cap things off, there's the Evil Wizard as a primary defense of Legend Spirit. This is a fight against the Grey Lucas and a horde of cult minion crashers on Final Destination. You just have to defeat the main fighter to win, who tends to use special attacks, has PSI attack increased, and has faster Final Smash charging. You are rewarded with PSI attack double up. And with that, that's how I believe the Castle Crashers could work in Smash. And with that, I'm just going to be continuing to play this with Gumbo. Oh, fuck you, Gumbo.